Okay, so here's my initial review of the all new Pixel tablet. We're gonna take a look at some key elements and more. Let's go ahead and hop in. First things first, the hub or the docking station. I don't like it, like at all. And I'll tell you more about it in a little bit. All right, so Google is giving the tablet world another go with this bad boy right here. And I will run you $500 for the base 128 gigs of internal storage, which is by the way, what I have here. This is the base model, so 128 gigs of internal storage, but there is another config for 256 gigs of internal storage. The storage, by the way, is non-expandable on either one of these two. Then you will have your color choice between the rose, the hazel variant, the porcelain, which is what I have here. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk design here. What you have here is a unibody aluminum frame design with rounded corners, as you can see here. It also has this nano ceramic coating texture that actually feels pretty smooth, kind of a reminder on what we saw on the Pixel 5. Just at the touch, there is a power button that combos as a fingerprint scanner to unlock the tablet, and it works actually pretty well. It's rather quick. Now, with a few things that I just mentioned here, the design, as you can see, just you know, the tablet itself does not screen premium tablet, right? And it doesn't claim to be one either. I just figured I'd just highlight that part there. We do have volume rockers, of course, as you can see here, the pogo pins on the back there for the hub, right? So you're gonna be able to connect that to that dock, which by the way, holds pretty firm when attached to that dock. There is a single eight megapixel camera on the back and the one on the front is also another eight megapixel one. Finally, of course, we have the USB type C port here. My take on the design, of course, and this is subjective. It's a good design, nothing particularly mind blowing or you know, outside of the realm of what we expect from Google at this point, right? So it's a good design. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next year. I wanna talk display. What you have here is an 11 inches, right? Well, specifically 10.95 inches display here, which if you are familiar with tablets, you would know that it sits right around what we tend to see with the average tablet size out there, right? It's an IPS display that has a resolution of 1600 by 2560. And so far in my experience, image quality is good, you know, and the tablet is fairly bright at about 500 nits is what it's being cited for. Although under direct sunlight, it could use a bit more brightness, right? I know it's 500 nits, but for some reason, when you are under direct sunlight, it doesn't seem that way. The viewing angles also are just decent under direct sunlight, you know, making it seem like it's more of an indoor tablet, right? So it's, I guess if you ask me, I would say it's more of an indoor tablet, like indoor viewing angles are just excellent. Another thing worth mentioning here about the display is that it only supports the standard 60 hertz refresh rate. So for someone like myself who bounces from low to high end tablets all the time, I could probably notice, and you know, even though I could probably notice that during, you know, scrolling when compared to actual flagship tablets, I still don't think it's going to be an issue for most people because, you know, Google makes the software do a fantastic job at just masking that 60 hertz. You know, user experience just makes it feel like the refresh rate is actually higher than what it is. Again, it's 60 hertz, but it is extremely smooth. But anyway, so let's go ahead and talk specs now. Well, I should say, you know, more specs, but most importantly, performance and overall user experience, right? So the platform here is the Google proprietary chipset, the Tensor G2. Some of you may know that already. That's the same one found on all of the current Pixel phones. It is comboed with eight gigs of RAM, and this will be for both configs. So for the 128 gigs, along with the 256 gigs. So either one is boasting eight gigs of RAM. The software loaded, of course, on here is the current Android 13. And overall user experience has been excellent so far. If you are at all familiar with Pixel devices, then you probably know where I'm going with this. It is super smooth, buttery smooth. Again, I just talked about the refresh rate and despite that 60 hertz, it feels like it's like a 90 hertz refresh rate on here. So it is very, very easy to the eye, very smooth when you're scrolling through things, right? Things like, you know, just simple navigation has been a breeze, right? Checking emails, again, like I said, navigating the internet, scrolling through stuff has been very, very good. And animations are great as always, right? So with the overall performance being good so far, the Tensor G2 seems pretty solid, at least so far, you know, on this particular device. And I haven't encountered any issues, you know, whether we're talking, you know, lags or crashes, none of that stuff. Playing games here has been pretty smooth and works pretty well watching videos, all that good stuff works pretty well. And that applies to, you know, light, moderate, and even heavy games, right? They all have been playing pretty well here. Although with things like, you know, Call of Duty, you have to readjust the settings in the game in order to enjoy a smooth experience. And something special worth highlighting here is that Google actually kind of retailored its own apps, right? At least most of them to make it fit the aspect ratio that you have here. So they seem to scale up very well on this course. Things like Twitter and you know Instagram or IG still do not scale up as you know what we would hope for them too. But anyways, with all of this being said, it won't, you know, this particular tablet won't rival, you know, a productivity tablet. And I mean the likes of the 
iPad Pros or the Galaxy Tab S8s of the world, but it's a solid performance all around, right? So the Pixel tablet here definitely is pushing out solid performance for what it is. Next year, I wanna go ahead and talk accessories, right? So, you know, we've seen manufacturers create or make official accessories for the tablets or the devices, whether we're talking phone or tablets, that they would typically drop. The Pixel tablet here does not have a native stylus, right? So you don't have like a Pixel pencil that comes with it, but the tablet itself is compatible with not only your typical, you know, passive or capacitive pencil, but it also does support USI pencils, which is pretty nice. And there are many third-party USI styluses out there that you can grab and use on this tablet. Now, that said, of course, the user experience still won't be exactly what you would get from a native stylus built by the manufacturer with the extra, you know, features and option, but it's still something that is better than your typical or regular capacitive pencil. Now, still sticking with accessories here, you have to know that Google also did not make an official keyboard cover, right? Like you would typically see with a lot of manufacturers out there, that would be, you know, the keyboard along with a trackpad and something to cover the back of the tablet. So you don't have that here, but you still do have the option to buy a third-party keyboard along with a mouse and be able to connect via Bluetooth and use this and be able to boost your productivity. There's just not an official one like you would typically see with a lot of manufacturers out there. And the next accessory, of course, is going to be the hub that everyone seems to be falling in love with, except for me, right? And I've already given you my opinion, my very unpopular opinion about the hub at the beginning of this video, right? Like, what's the big deal? I, I don't know. And again, I don't particularly hate it or anything, but you know, I'm just, I'm certainly not a fan of it. And I'll even tell you why, right? So I'll tell you why. I think I've grown to be a more of a tablet purist, right? And the hub, the way I see it, it takes away, you know, kind of the tablet feel of the Pixel tablet. Again, that's just kind of my twisted mind. That's kind of how I see it, right? I have a bunch of cheap Amazon tablets in my house sitting on different docks and also a couple of Google Nest hubs as well, also sitting on their docks, you know, all like in the hallway, in the kitchen. And now this tablet on the dock kind of makes it feel like just another one of those cheap devices that I have sitting, you know, either in the hallway or in one of the bedrooms or the kitchen counter or wherever I actually even have one in my office. I'm not sure if this is going to be in the frame, but there's one right behind me there. So I kind of have them all over the place. But anyway, so it kind of just takes away that sort of exclusivity that, you know, tablets typically enjoy, right? So this guy is kind of like, is this a tablet or is this a Nest Hub? What is it? And don't get me wrong, with all of this said, I cannot deny the you know, functionality of the dock, right? I've even tried it and it's, well, it works pretty well. It's, it's practical because, you know, it can essentially do almost everything that a normal Google Hub would. It's just not for me. And again, it's because I feel it takes away a little bit of the tablet side of the device there, but I digress. In terms of cameras, as I mentioned earlier, you get both the front and the rear camera at eight megapixel each. And they are essentially your standard Android mid-range tablet cameras, right? So nothing particularly amazing. The only difference would be, you know, in post-processing because obviously with Pixel devices, generally they do pretty well when I'm talking pictures, of course, they do pretty well with posts, right? Because the chipset and that software do a pretty banging job at, you know, making changes or making adjustments. In terms of video calling, of course, as long as you are in a well-lit area, you should be fine. The battery has been decent also. I've been able to essentially go the entire day, right? So every day that I've used so far, I've been able to go the entire day before I put it on the charger. Now, Google does claim 12 hours. Again, you have to keep in mind that this is subjective. It's going to depend on how you use your tablet and all that good stuff. So I can tell you, you know, how long it's going to last, but I can tell you that I'm able to see the entire day with it. Again, nothing that is crazy, but nothing below the normal. Now, because it's a Pixel device, there's of course the Google Assistant. It works, you know, but somehow it doesn't seem to be as intuitive here when compared to when it is on a Pixel phone. I don't know, it could just be me, but still very useful, especially, you know, since it's gonna be hanging somewhere on the dock and you are likely gonna be making voice commands. But anyways, with everything that we've covered, let me go ahead and just give you my take. The Google Pixel tablet here is a good tablet, right? It's not something that's gonna blow your mind, you know, when you buy it, but it's a good tablet, especially for a first generation true Pixel tablet. My only gripe, actually, have a few would be that at $500 you know the price point of $500 should not come with as many of these compromises that you have here right so give me something like an expandable storage right you're like why they're taking that away I know that's just, that's the case on phones but no expandable storage no premium build like it's not a premium build like when you hold it as I mentioned at the beginning 
it's not something that feels so freaking premium in your hands. It truly feels like, you know, the Pixel 5 or the Pixel 4a. And those same compromises, they don't even have a pen, right? So include a native pen. That would be nice to have. I mean, I could go on. There are many things that they compromised on that I wish they had not. But again, I'm hoping to see that in the next generation because there is definitely competition out there. And if they don't come out correct, they won't be able to stand. There's a lot of competition out there. And we could go as recently as the OnePlus Pad. That is pretty good competition out there. It's nice to have a Pixel tablet if you are in the ecosystem already. You have Pixel Watch, and Pixel Phone, and all that stuff. This would already be, you know, it would be a nice tablet or a nice device to add to create that continuity, you know, between your devices because you're able to have this communicate with the other devices. So definitely a nice addition. Not necessarily a tablet that I would say, hey, just go ahead and buy it, right? So I would ask more questions just to figure out what your situation is before I tell you, mm, you know what, the Pixel tablet might be the one to go for. But anyway, I'm certainly hoping that this was informative. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Please don't forget to like, of course, share the video if you know anyone who would be interested. Make sure you comment, right? If you have any questions, like I said, make sure you comment. I'm gonna catch you in that comment section like I always do. I'm also gonna catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.